I V M. How can failure pave the way for success? Isn't it counterintuitive? Why should you learn how to fail? Are you not supposed to minimize, deny, or even dismiss all the possibilities of failure? Welcome to Absolutely Right, a podcast where we celebrate and decode minds of some outstanding achievers and simplify their secrets and hacks for you to implement in your life. I am your host Aditi Surana. I am a graphologist and a high performance coach. In today's short Friday episode, let's talk about how failure is actually the door to success. How failing can put you on a fast track. Find things that you can do to learn how to fail faster and fail forward. If you're new here, let me fill you in. Absolutely Right Friday episodes are designed to create an actionable change. With every episode, we create a worksheet, or as we call it, Friday Fun Sheet, for you to commit to growth and take actions. This is a PDF document that you can download from my website, aditisurana.com/podcast. When did you first learn that failure is bad? and it must be avoided at all costs in school right yes we were all trained to follow rules and abide by a structure and anyone or anything that didn't fit the rule book was considered wrong or a failure we all know this in real life i mean real time adult life there is no rule book you can try and minimize the risk by taking precautions or by doing things right but failure will show up in different shapes and sizes and if you're lucky then in many shapes and many sizes the author john maxwell in his book failing forward says failure is not the opposite of success but actually a road to it what if just what if we are a society where we never learned how to deal with failures gracefully what if the unnecessary drama of shame blame guilt embarrassment was part of the conformist rule book a society where different is considered wrong or unacceptable luckily that is changing we definitely need a more encouraging and experimental approach to look at failure for sure so let's look at five ways to turn the table in your fun sheet take a moment and scribble details of that one area where you are scared of failing that one person's whose approval or disapproval keeps you on your toes or that unimaginable fear of loss that keeps you awake at night try and apply all these points to that situation and tell me which one is your favorite point number 1 failure is inevitable but suffering is optional i know i am borrowing this line from haruki murakami's actual quote pain is inevitable but suffering is optional there is no real life story without failure Have you ever met anybody who built something or anything or mastered any skill or even learned anything worthwhile without falling or failing? Did you get your first dal recipe right? Did you learn to cycle without falling? Did you build anything or say your team without upsetting a few people? If you're trying to do something or other anything new or different, you will fail in some or the other way. If you accept this as part of the process then you will not resist it. If you are able to look at it as as your learning curve then you will grow with it. If you are to get your first yes after 25 no's then make sure that you get your first 25 rejections as soon as possible. Point number 2. Do not take failures personally. We all do it. We are all told that you are a good girl or a good boy if you do as asked. More importantly, you are a bad girl or a bad boy if you fail to do so. In the culture of carrot versus stick, rewards versus punishments, we all are trained to look at failure as a sign of poor character. I still remember the time before I made up my mind to sign my divorce papers. A part of me was warning me against the embarrassment I was planning to walk into. The rolling eyes, the judgmental looks, the obvious commenting behind my back. a coach with the tag of a failed marriage i didn't know how to approach my clients myself what would i tell from the space of uh, being a mess it took a lot of work journaling reading lots of books talking to experts talking to people who cared for me genuinely then came the day the day where i accepted that i had failed um it wasn't the easiest one 
it was tough to reach that point. But when I reached that point, I looked at the events and I asked myself, so it is done. Now what? The glass had already broken. The milk had already spilled. I still remember the quiet of that moment. To my surprise, I realized that my decision, or rather, a massive, significant, and really meaningful decision of my life had gone wrong. I had failed. But I also realized that that didn't mean that I was a failure. And that was my turning point, a stepping stone, a game changer moment, because I took charge of my situation thereon. So my question to you is, what is that moment that you are avoiding to accept? Accept your failure, accept that something has terribly gone wrong. Point number three, forgive, but do not forget. Every failure is a report card that shows you need to change, alter, and try something new to achieve your target. It is like a GPS. It is telling you that you need a course correction. Forgive yourself for failing. Sure. Accept the situation for whatever it is. Sure. But that does not mean that you forget your lessons and resign to the situation. I know so many people who stay stuck and refuse to try anything new, new business, job, or even relationship. You must learn as much as you can from your mistake and make it your training ground. That brings me to my next point. Point number four, cultivate growth mindset. Over 30 years ago, researcher Carol Dweck and her colleagues got interested in students' attitude about failure. In her book, Mindset, she speaks about fixed versus growth mindset. Research on brain plasticity has proven how connectivity between neurons can change with experience, which means if you deal with your failure with a growth mindset, then you can turn the same situation into an opportunity to grow. How to do it? Start with solution-oriented questions. What can I learn from this situation? Which skill set is lacking here? How can I minimize the damage? Use handwritten journaling to write your answers. Point number five, practice failure. Yeah, you heard it right. Practice failure. As part of my yoga teacher's training course, I was reading Yogacharya B.K. Sayangar's book, Light on Yoga Sutra of Patanjali. He was talking about the headstand posture. He wrote, if you restrain yourself too much, then your legs won't go up. If you're too relaxed, then you'll fall on the other side. Use the practice on your mat to practice the mental balance of how much to control and how much to let go in the asana as well as throughout your day. In a way, he was saying experience balance as well as going off balance to train your muscle. I would say learn something stimulating and challenging that will help you practice how to fail as well as how to bounce back. Question your preferences. Try something completely different. Walk into some discomfort. Create safe spaces to fail and be comfortable with it. I challenge myself every Friday with our Friday episodes. I take up a complex topic and try to make it as simple and as relatable as I can. Your feedback is my report card. I am grateful for all your love, encouragement, as well as corrective feedback. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Absolutely Right. Share your failing forward stories with me on my Insta account at Aditi Surana. Please review, comment and share this podcast with anybody who can get benefited by these conversations. For the month of October, we are doing a special awareness drive around calmness called Kama Sutra with Aditi Surana. Every day for 12 minutes, I do a handwriting based meditation process on my Instagram handle. All the details are mentioned on this link, aditisurana.com slash Kama Sutra, C-A-L-M. If you like this podcast, then don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IVM podcast on Twitter as well as Instagram. Let's connect on Wednesday. Till then, happy writing. I hope you enjoyed that show. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.
What a week we had this week. We had so much crossover, so many great guests. I don't even know where to start. Okay, yeah, I do know where to start. Let's start with Uncle Please Sit. Uncle Please Sit, Joel and Tushar had Hamsini Hariyaran. Hamsini hosts a show called States of Anarchy with their network. She is a China expert and they discuss the India-China relationship. Really fascinating conversation. Cyrus had two conversations this week instead of our normal Thursday cock and bull. Great conversations. Both of them will be back with our regular cock and bull next week. But this week, you could definitely check out the conversation you have with Baron Grover, really fascinating stuff. And Nikhil Taneja, who was the founder of Yuva and the creative director for the India Film Project Festival, which is going on this weekend. He was on the show as well. Cyrus was also on Advertising is Dead this weekend with Varun Dugirala. Cyrus and Varun discussed the, you know, Cyrus's intent on randomness. Ranveer Prar guested on Gauri Devi Deyal show. This rounds on me. Another amazing conversation over there. Priyanka Kimani, one of the best IP lawyers in this country, was on Storytellers and Story Sellers for a fascinating conversation. Definitely do check that out. And finally, I wanted to congratulate Zarina Punawala for her 100th episode. She had Ashish Vidyarthi as a guest on that. If you have not been listening to the Empowering series, please do. It's one of the great shows out there. And with that, I hope to see you again next week. Beta, did you know 79% of all scientists in NASA are Indian only? Dekho, India mein tax sirf middle class bharti hai. Everyone is just enjoying free, yaar. Aaj kal ke youngsters are only interested in partying and enjoying. Unko desh ki padi hi nahi hai. Beta, tum bas shadi kar lo. Uske baad to you can enjoy life like anything. I will tell you what this country needs. This country needs 15 years of dictatorship. That is the only, the only way to become a superpower. See the Chinese, how much they've progressed. So now tumne ye WhatsApp forward dekha. So what's common between all of these statements? They're all absolutely rubbish. Fake WhatsApp forwards that spread like wildfire. And statements that defy any logic. We are here to debunk them all. Where are family WhatsApp groups? Worst nightmare. Where what happens when you read a book? Basically, we're just a bunch of guys who want to cut through the bullshit of everyone saying this, how it won't be true. So that the next time someone confidently squeezes out some WhatsApp or Twitter BS, you can look them dead in the eye and go, Uncle... Please sit. So join me, Joel. And me, Tushar. Every Mondays for a fresh new episode of Uncle, Please Sit. <laughs>